So, you know, I, I expect there's a, a pretty high likelihood that the CCP will attempt an invasion in the next decade. Are How are they using espionage to prepare for that invasion? Or, you know, if they get really fortunate, it's just a total surrender. Well, I, I, I always say when I'm asked that question, what do you mean by invasion? Because the, the U.S. perspective is always putting iron on target, right? Um, that it's going to be a military invasion. And were I China, I would be relentless in cyber attacks for the next 10 years. I put half my military into conducting cyber attacks to bring Taiwan to its knees economically. I would be have a trade war where I'd, every other country that was dealing with Taiwan, I'd put the thumbscrews just like they've done with Lithuania. I, I, I'd apply that to every country that was dealing with Taiwan, and I'd soften them up for a year to see how that goes. A, a, a military conflict might not even be necessary, and it's certainly not in, in China's interest to do, particularly if there's a, pro, a, 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 a an idea that they could lose a lot of people or that they could lose it, you know, lose the conflict itself, because that means the end of the CCP. So I, I think it depends on how they actually apply it. Yeah, because recently uh, there were those war games where it looked like like ultimately Taiwan pulled through, although at a very high cost to both sides. But in particular, China losing, you know, 10,000 troops and losing like most of its naval fleet and basically weakening the CCP. Right. But I mean, that war games was a, you know, boots on the ground type invasion war games. Uh, are, are there things being are there war games that are not boots on the ground war games that are actually looking into this kind of cyber economic, cyber economic whole of society um, approach? Good question. I, I actually thought of putting that together at one time, um, you know, bringing Wall Street into it, bringing cyber, you know, folks into it, understand, bringing members of Congress and understanding what the U.S. and allies, what in a whole of nation approach, what capabilities you could bring to the table to respond to that. It's the war game that hasn't happened, but it really should. That should be the annual, the annual effort to do. So, how do you make that happen? Um, you don't make it happen in a government that is tactical and doesn't think strategic at the approach. Um, you potentially uh, do it through a university. You potentially could do it, you know, uh, through a think tank. You could do it through a, a number of other ways. To be able to 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 do that, but I really think it's a it's it's something that's been on my plate for a while, but it's something that absolutely should be done. Well, so then I guess this brings us to what can what can Amer America as a whole do, and what can individuals do? Well, if you're a company, um, first off, the the individuals look being in in touch with members of Congress with your elected representatives really does work. If so much else in this country doesn't work, that actually does. So when people write into a member of Congress about something, they assume it's like 70 other people feel that way about the particular issue. And when they write in about their concerns about China, that really gets Congress motivated to move forward in a direction, number one. Number two, education. Uh, education is, is everything in this environment because companies don't know. I mean, half the time government doesn't know the type of threats that it faces. So um, education is a very, very big deal uh, for companies and, and, and governments. And at, as you know, I, I won't pitch myself here, but that's, that's an area that I really focus very hard on um, in educating companies and educating governments in exactly the type of threat that, um, that uh, comes at them. So I would say that. You, know, but be, you have a well, new course, right? I do. I do. I have a um, the world's first uh, online course on Chinese espionage. It's a 12-hour self-paced online course, and it gives all the details about um, exactly how China is conducting its espionage activities, how it conducts covert influence campaigns, and uh, how it conducts economic espionage. So it's very detailed for, for, for professionals, but I think anyone with a strong interest will really get a lot out of it. Cool. We'll, we'll definitely put a link to that below for anyone watching who's interested. Right. But right. Uh, but yeah, like what else as a whole society approach? As like a, as like a viewer of the show, like what, you know, besides taking the course, I mean, like what could a, a typical viewer do? 
Well, as I said, typical viewer can express their um, express their concerns not only to their you know first to educate yourself a little on the issue, right? So you know, like we have discussed today, how much is lost? You know, nearly you know um, four hundred billion a year to uh, you know Chinese theft of intellectual property. You know, uh, educate yourselves just a little on the issue, and then push this at a state level because states like Florida and Maryland. And others have just come out with laws on trying to abate China's theft of technology, you know, Chinese espionage. They've actually pushed this at state levels, which is long overdue. Uh, I would say push this in the university environment. For anyone in the university environment, I hope a lot of uh, uh, students see this, it's an opportunity to educate yourself and to understand uh, the, the pressures and the influences that are on universities and think tanks. Uh, so there's... You know, leveraging strengths at the um, at the state level, leveraging strengths at the congressional level, uh, educating yourself so you're able to do this. I mean, it just takes a simple email, you know, once you have to express your concerns and interests. And if you're in one of the many thousands in the uh, um, law enforcement or um, or insider threat or security field, uh, this is an issue of being vigilant. And understanding that that is a, you know, that is a primary threat today that's facing you. I mean, the military knows this. We act as, I've actually heard in the Pentagon, the norm statement is it's China all day, every day. So that body taking them two decades to get here. But, but even after during 9 11 and, you know, and, and the, and the focus that we've had on terrorism since that body is coming to understand that this nation state poses a considerable threat to the United States. So I, I, I think people are starting to come to that side and that understanding. And of course, watching your show, what a way to educate oneself. I, I agree. More people should watch the show for longer periods of time. Cost you absolutely nothing to be in the 50 cent army. You know, you're not going to take it with you. Right. Okay? Period. I mean, you're the expert. So, you know, people should... Follow what you say. I am getting people to jump over the divide to actually do something is probably the biggest problem, right? You know, they don't believe that writing a, a letter to their congressman or senator is going to do anything, but it does. They don't believe that educating themselves that they can make a difference, but they actually really can. And, and, and it's important that they just believe that and understand it and try and move forward with it. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Like if the people in like the, the top levels of these corporations or in government knew that China was a Marxist Leninist state that was the enemy of the U.S., they would – you – these people watching us would make different decisions. So that is a way to get things done. We have to take back society. Right. Yeah, that's exactly it. You have to be an activist on this. And if, you know, a thousand people are writing to company XYZ and saying, you know what, I'm not really – thrilled about the fact that you're, you know, not addressing any of the human rights issues in China and that you're ignoring them, you know, so I can get my 69 cent piece of plastic. I, I got it. But, um, but there's some things that are important that really need to be addressed. And it's your obligation to have that social responsibility as a company to do that. I feel very important about that. I feel very, you know, that that's very important. You need to do that. I mean, if you could get hundreds of people to write to just one company, you would change the nature and the direction of that company. But it's getting people off the dime. And so I hope every one of your viewers will, will come out with a different attitude and activist attitude on what to do about this problem. Yeah, maybe we could figure out some way to lead that. You know, have some specific initiatives for people to do. That's a good idea. Yeah. Let's keep that in the back of our minds. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I hope after, you know, after 20 years, uh, a lot more people will come running to you crying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how to feel about that, but thank you very much. I appreciate it. And thank you for what you do. It's extraordinary the difference that you're making. I, 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 I'm, I'm actually just overwhelmed. It really is amazing watching one person make such, such a, sorry, multiple people make so much. Well, how, how I... Yeah. <laughs> benevolently have sacrificed and bled <laughs> with my sweat and tears. The good of mankind, alone, by myself. Well, yeah. and, you know, having great guests like you on. 
But you. outside of that, that's the dynamic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Are you crying, Matt? <laughs> I'm not crying. You're crying. <laughs> yeah, it's been great having you on. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, I mean, I guess I, I guess we forgot to say at the beginning, speaking of me being the only person who's of any significance on this show, uh, Shelly was not able to join us today. I suspect because she's been a spy all along. It is uh, not impossible. It's, it's right. Yeah. And she's she's covered it really well by refusing to say the dirty reds. Exactly what a dirty red would say. Exactly. My gosh, we've cracked the code. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel about all this, uh, you know, knowing that America is losing nearly $400 billion a year to Chinese espionage and that most of it's being done through relatively incompetent people? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was that was a big surprise. Um, yeah, that the spies are not actually very capable. Uh, but no, I mean, it's I'm not that surprised because, you know, we've been doing the show for so long. It's just it's just the continued frustration of just the decades of people being like, eh, is this really a problem? Is it really my problem? Yeah, just the the apathy. It's it's pretty crazy. Right. And then, you know, buying your plastic thing at, for 69 cents at the store that's you know, made in China when like if you were willing to pay 79 cents, yeah, you could get something made not in China. I mean, and maybe for, for 89 cents to be made in America. And just also like how it's kind of like deaths by a thousand cuts. Like for the, for by these- a thousand grains of sand picked up at the beach. No, no, that's that's not the same. Uh, no, it's, it's like, you know, th these people like don't necessarily like even see themselves as spies. They just do a little bit here, a little bit there, and then suddenly they're in over their head. It really reminds me of uh, Londa Malari in Babylon 5 and how, you know, he got a little bit of help from the shadows, then a little bit more, and suddenly he's responsible for genocide. Wow. It could happen to anyone. Yeah, or like, you know, Anakin Skywalker, like he just wants- Who? <laughs> I'm making very well-known references to Babylon 5 and you're talking about some, some cloud man Walker, what? Yeah, I mean, he just he just wanted a little bit of learning from the dark side to learn how to bring back someone from the dead. And he like, just wanted a mom. He just wanted his mom back. That's all they wanted. Yeah. Uh, it's so easy to turn to the dark side. Uh, so this is what happens when Shelly isn't here to keep us on the rails. I don't I don't know if she'd keep us on the rails here. Well, it's it's we always go off the rails. But without her, I feel like we're just flying into the void. Better than screaming into the void. That's true. Uh, thank you for watching. Be sure to check out Babylon 5. I'm Chris Chappell. And I'm Matt Ganesta. We'll talk to you next time. Mm -hmm.